Hi everyone, welcome back. Today I want to talk about winter efficiency. It's something I've been working on for quite a while, for a few months now, accumulating some test data about efficiency levels in winter and how you can mitigate against the lower efficiency, the less range that you have in winter. But first, why do we have less range, worse efficiency in winter? Well, the first and obvious thing is it's colder. And when it's colder, you turn the heater on, you turn the fan up, you turn the heated steering wheel on, the heated seats on, and all of those things consume electricity. Electricity that you're not using to propel the car. Now, in a short distance journey, that has a larger impact because the proportion of energy you're using more of it is going towards heating, not propelling the car forwards. On a longer distance journey, especially if you have a heat pump and the heat pump starts to take over, then the amount that the heater has an impact on the energy you're using gradually reduces over the longer distance. So rather than long distance trips, my testing is about short distance trips. I'm interested in seeing the definitive difference between using a heater, not using a heater. So the second thing to consider is in the winter, the weather conditions are different, so the air is denser, it's thicker, so the car has to push through that dense air uh, more than it does in the summer because it's thinner, drier air. So with the damp air, there is more resistance and it uses more energy to travel the same distance. The same with the rolling resistance on the road. With wet roads, there is more resistance and therefore it takes more effort, more energy to push the car the same distance. And that's why we're getting less range, less efficiency in the car in winter conditions. But there's a third element also, and that's the battery itself. It seems, from information that I've read, seen on the internet, seen in other videos, that we can expect the amount of energy that's stored in the battery as it's being transferred and delivered to the motor to produce forward momentum, so that actual conversion of energy from being stored to being used to propel you forward, that is less efficient in winter. Now, I don't actually understand why. I don't understand why that battery stored, that conversion process, is less efficient in winter than it is in summer. But supposedly it is. But by how much? How much is it just that it's cold and the battery doesn't work as well in the winter or the electric motor doesn't work in, as well in winter, wh whichever it is? How much of the difference in range that we're seeing, difference in efficiency we're seeing, how much is it down to the battery not working as well in winter conditions compared to having the heater on? When I started to realise that I was having less range in winter conditions, I wanted to understand it. Not just accept it, it is what it is. Instead of getting 280 miles range, I'm now going to get 230, 240, 250 miles range, perhaps. I didn't want to just accept it, I wanted to understand it. Because you then see some other questions being asked on the internet, which is, well, let's warm the battery up before I go out, and then I won't have that efficiency loss. So how would you go about doing that? Well, partly, you could charge the car. So if you charge the car just before you're going to go out, so say it was charging for an hour or two hours maybe, before you're about to leave, then you would have had that electrical energy going into the battery and it should have warmed it up somewhat and therefore you'll get better efficiency when you're driving. So that makes sense, doesn't it? Just the timing of when you charge could stimulate the battery, warm it slightly, uh, sufficiently, so that you get better efficiency. So if that's the case, how much better efficiency can you get? And the same for preconditioning. So when we talk about preconditioning, that's about warming the car with the heaters. And we're talking about whether we use an app or a timer, whether the car has to be plugged in, all those sort of things. And yes, the Kona Electric does not have an app. And yes, it does have to be plugged in before you can use preconditioning on the timer. So if you precondition the car and warm it up, Will that also warm the battery? Is it preconditioning the battery so that you are having greater efficiency as you set off? Well, again, it's like charging, isn't it? Because in the Kona Electric, when you're plugged in, you're using the heaters, which are using the energy stored in the main battery. So you're drawing energy out of the battery. And because you're plugged in, it's replacing that energy from the charger, from your grid supply or solar supply or whatever it is that you're using at that time. So it is sort of charging, but it's only charging at the rate to replenish the energy. It's not charging the battery to any greater degree than what it was before the preconditioning came on. So it is charging, but not charging to the full power level, perhaps. It's only charging just to replace that energy. So does preconditioning have an impact on your efficiency as you set off? Those are the things that I want to find out and I want to understand. 
So firstly, I've created myself a little test circuit. I know a route that I'm going to go and use in the car. Um, it's not very far. Um, I've actually found that I have to have a variation of route um, because sometimes traffic is congested and I have to take a slightly different route. Sometimes I'm driving just over nine miles, sometimes I'm driving just over eight miles, but it's pretty similar and it's a pretty similar distance. It gives reasonably consistent results. So I'm happy with that test route that it's giving an indication. Now this isn't a scientific test, it's not going to be 100% accurate, it's giving an indication so that we can understand what's actually happening. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not just doing it for you, I'm doing it for me because I want to understand what's going on and what difference I can make to make the efficiency of the car better. Should I be warming or preconditioning the car, the battery, before I set off? That specifically. So the first thing to do is go out for a test in the car and uh, go along those routes, the eight or nine mile route, and see what efficiency I can get in cold conditions with no heater on, no heated seats on, nothing at all, just the fan set on to one or two so it demists the screen, but nothing else on at all, to get a benchmark for what the car performs like in winter. So it's winter conditions, nothing else impacting it, no heaters, etc. So in 7 degrees C conditions in winter, and this was on dry roads, so it wasn't raining, uh, I managed to achieve 5.3 miles per kilowatt hour. Now most of that is because it was 30 miles an hour or less travelling on the road, and coming back towards my home, there's a slight uh, descent, so you can recoup some energy, and uh, it's quite efficient. So even in winter conditions... I can achieve 5.3 miles per kilowatt hour in a small distance journey without the heaters on. So I went out and did that test again. Uh, I did a slightly different test route and I had no heater on, no heated seats, no heated steering wheel. The fan was on the minimum speed just to keep the windscreen demisted, but nothing at all. So winter conditions, dry roads, about 7 degrees outside, 7 degrees C, and uh, nothing else impacting the efficiency apart from my driving and how cold it was. In that test trip of 9.8 miles, I managed to achieve 4.9 miles per kilowatt hour. So we're starting to see a slight variation based on the route, but we're in the ballpark of 5 to 5.3 miles per kilowatt hour achieved in this same sort of similar route, in the same sort of similar 7 degrees C conditions with no heating elements on whatsoever. So for the next tests, which are going to have the heater on, so basically getting straight into the car, uh, no demisting, no defrosting, no preconditioning, nothing like that, straight in, turn the car on, start driving, and do those same test routes and see what happens with the heater on. So I did use the heated seats, I did have the heated steering wheel on, and I did use the heaters set to 21 degrees C inside the car. So with all the heaters on, as you would normally for setting off in cold winter conditions, what actually happened? Well, it was 9.4 miles travelled, it was 4 degrees C outside, and I achieved 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour. So immediately you can see that there is a tangible difference between 3.4 and the 4.9 and 5.3 that I achieved. And that difference only is using the heating and heated seats, etc. I did the test again, obviously one test on its own isn't conclusive, so I did the test again on another day, and this time it was 2 degrees C, and I travelled 8.3 miles on the test circuit, and I achieved 3.4 miles per kilowatt hour again. So we're getting pretty consistent results, whether it's 2 degrees or 4 degrees outside, and whether it's the 8 mile circuit or the 9 mile, whether it's exactly the same, it's getting very similar results. Again, significantly different to the 4.9 and 5.3. So that tells you the difference, the variable difference in using the heaters or not using the heaters. That's a whole 1.5 to 1.9 miles per kilowatt hour difference. So the big test, what I wanted to see was if you precondition the car, if you set the heaters on on timer for half an hour before you're going to leave and you have the car having the electricity go through the battery, and having the car warmed on the inside so you do not need to use the heaters, how much efficiency will you get out of the car? Will it be more or will it be less? Um, the idea being, if we've warmed the battery up, we should get more efficiency. And if the car's already warmed, I don't have to use the heaters so I can have those off. So in theory, I should get better efficiency than I have in cold conditions with no heaters on. 
Th that's the theory, isn't it? That's what I'm hoping to try and prove or disprove. So that's what I did. Preconditioned the car. The car was warmed up to the 21 or 22, I think, uh, degrees. And then I reset the trip meters and turned the car on and set off on the drive to measure the consumption of only the driving, no heaters on, with a warmed car, preconditioned battery, if there is any preconditioning on the battery, and see what result I got. So I did 9.4 miles and 4 degrees C weather outside and achieved 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour. So definitely less than driving it from cold with no heaters on. Yes, less, <laughs> um, but definitely more than having the heaters on. So the difference with this test is the electricity I used to heat the car came from the grid and therefore I paid for the car to be heated and then as I set off the efficiency of the car was different because I didn't need the heaters on in the car. The difference because it's 4.6, why isn't it better or at least the same as what I achieved before? Well the only difference was the temperature. Instead of being 7 degrees outside, it was 4 degrees outside. I think what we can conclude from that is we, I'm not going to say that it is worse to precondition the car because I think the conditions impacted the efficiency and caused that difference. I think what I can conclusively say from my test is that preconditioning the car, warming the car up, does not precondition and warm the battery in any way as to give you extra efficiency for the drive going forwards. Charging the car then. What about charging the car and whether that impacts battery temperature? So if I was to put my car on charge an hour or two hours before, will I get better efficiency going forwards? Well, I didn't actually do those tests because I had help from a very friendly viewer, Rainer Boner. I hope I got that pronunciation correct. If not, I apologize, Rainer. The Rainer has a Nissan Leaf and basically has been doing some tests measuring the temperature of the battery based on charging and then looking at the efficiency of the car uh, traveling similar distances. And the information that came back to me was that surprisingly, the battery temperature, even for charging for a significant period of time, hardly went up at all. And it's because we're charging at lower rates, it, it must not be impacting battery temperature. So in cold conditions of, I think it was about one, two, three degree in that sort of range, temperature did not go up very much at all in which case it would have a negligible effect, if any, on the actual efficiency of your driving. So I think it's a bit of a myth, and a myth that we can now say is busted, that charging your car before you set off isn't going to have a huge difference. It will have a minor negligible difference on the battery temperature. It definitely went up, you know, don't get me wrong, it definitely did go up, but only by a couple of degrees, and that on its own isn't enough to give you a measurable difference in efficiency. So there you go, that's what I've found about winter efficiency. In summary, it's definitely going to be worse, you're definitely going to have less range, but most of the reason for it is the heaters. The heaters make the biggest difference, the weather conditions then add on top of that as well, but the impact of the battery efficiency and why it is less efficient in winter that I'm not 100% certain of and how much that is affected by. If you look at my test where I achieved 5.3 miles per kilowatt hour, that's not bad for winter conditions, although 7 degrees. Definitely, we can see that coming down to 4 degrees, it gets worse. So the more you're getting to 0 degrees C and negative figures, the worse that efficiency is. If anyone knows why batteries in the electric motors etc are less efficient from converting the energy from the battery into the energy to propel your car why it's less efficient in the winter leave me some comments below i would love to know specifically why that is preconditioning preconditioning does not precondition the battery from what i can see in the kona electric it makes no difference on efficiency whatsoever and therefore isn't something you should do before you set off on a journey hoping to get better efficiency you precondition the car to make it warm and comfortable for your journey. But as I've said in my uh, preconditioning video that I did a while ago, it is so fast anyway, um, I don't think I'll ever bother preconditioning the car, or not very much at all, because within one minute of being in the car, you're warm anyway, and you turn the heated seats on, the heated steering wheel on, and you turn the heater on, and away you go. You're actually going to consume more energy, even though it's from the grid, to precondition the car than you would do if you just got in the car and got driving. 
Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, sorry it's not more detailed, but basically ran out of time, didn't do enough testing, and winter is over too soon in the UK. And uh, best to post it now before summer gets here. Thanks for watching again. See you again soon. Bye-bye for now.